lovelies, welcome or welcome back to my channel. You probably clicked on this video because you love bread and the thought of not having bread probably scares you. Don't worry, I'm not judging, I've been there. I've actually loved bread so much, I would have it every single morning, three slices with my breakfast. I would go to sleep dreaming of bread, I would munch on bread. When I went to restaurants, I would always ask for bread and butter and if they didn't have it, I would be very, very disappointed. But I'm here to tell you how I was actually able to quit bread and believe it or not, it doesn't take that much discipline. Coming right up. Three, two, one. By the way guys, if you're new here, my name is Seppi and long story short, I've lost about 50 pounds, I got a bunch of certification in nutrition and weight loss. I'm very, very passionate about my healthy lifestyle and I want to share that with all of you guys. So if you're into that, please make sure you support my new YouTube channel by subscribing and liking my video. Now let's talk about bread. Oh my god, I'm actually craving bread right now as I'm recording this, but let's not think about that, let's focus on this video. So a lot of my clients, when I tell them to cut down bread, they always tell me, I love bread, you know, I can't really give up bread and I always tell them you might as well have ice cream and they always laugh at me but I'm actually being serious and I'm gonna explain to you why quickly so in order for me to be able to explain that I need to explain to you what glycemic index and glycemic loads are if you're interested in that make sure you keep watching if you're not you can skip to the next chapter so when we're talking about glycemic index is basically how fast a certain food is gonna raise your blood sugar within the next two hours after you eat glycemic load is basically multiplying the glycemic index by the number of carbs that is in this certain food that you're eating. So if you actually find out how much carbs is in a certain bread, and then you find out what the glycemic index of it is, you can actually Google it and find it online. Multiply it together, divide it by 100, it will give you a number which is the glycemic load. So if the glycemic load is between 0 to 10, it's low, from 11 to 19, it's medium, and 19 and above, basically 20 and above, is high glycemic index, and those are the kind of products that you really want to stay away from. But let's talk about bread for now. As you guys can see on the chart that I'm going to show on the screen here, two tablespoons of table sugar actually has a lower glycemic load compared to one slice of bread. Another thing to take note of here is the glycemic load of white bread and whole wheat bread are basically the same. So they both raise your blood sugar the same amount within the two hours of eating. The reason we care so much about our blood glucose level is because when that rises, our insulin rises. And when insulin rises and falls back quickly, it affects our metabolic functions and metabolic fuels as well as our hormones. And the most interesting point here is that insulin is actually linked to our mesolimpic pathways, which is a part of the brain that is connected to our reward reward system. Basically what I mean is that when you have bread in the morning, it's going to leave you craving more of that reward or the carbs or the sugar. So you're going to crave more sugar throughout the day and it's going to make you addicted to it. So basically when you wake up and you're going to have a bread, from now on you're going to be conscious what you're putting in your body. It's basically sugar and what it does is that it's going to make you crave even more food and carbohydrates throughout the day. But I knew all of this and yes, absolutely, I still couldn't give up bread and this is what I did. So there were three occasions that I really craved bread. Number one, in the mornings. Number two, during my menstrual cycle. And number three was when I went to restaurants. And I'm going to tell you exactly what technique I used for each of these occasions. The first thing I did, I replaced my morning bread with English muffin. English muffins are basically the same thing scientifically, technically. I know, I know, I understand. But to me, guys, to be honest, English muffins were my favorite. It still did it for me. It was still bread. I still didn't have to give it up. I was still holding on to those habits and it made me feel comfortable. I wasn't like, oh my God, I can't have bread. And so I think it kind of helped me. And then I thought about having whole wheat English muffin and I hated those so much. So I got the whole wheat regular bread instead. And I know they're still the same, but I never thought in my life I would actually eat whole wheat bread. I hated it so much. So then I started having that. And since the whole wheat English muffins were so bad, I was actually happy with the whole wheat bread, which was a miracle. Then I switched to rye bread. I really, truly, wholeheartedly hated rye bread. I don't understand how people like rye bread. It doesn't taste good at all. I hated it so much, so I actually started just having oatmeal in the morning. I made it really delicious. I added peanut butter to it. I added berries to it. And I really, really enjoyed it. But the good thing was, I wasn't really losing weight. It was still a very high calorie thing for me to eat, but I wasn't eating bread anymore. And then I started cleaning out the oatmeal a little bit more and more, and I cut it down as much as I could as I went on. 
The second occasion that I really craved bread was at the restaurant. Every time waiters or waitresses would come to my table and ask me if I wanted bread, I really wanted to say yes, but it pained me to say no and I instantly regretted it. I know, I know, some of you might say, oh, why don't you try having a balanced lifestyle? I do now, but back then, if I would have a piece of bread at a restaurant, it wouldn't end there. I would want dessert right after. I would have to go to 7-Eleven after to get ice cream again. I would go home. In the morning, I would crave Starbucks, and it would just start all over again for me. I just couldn't really stick with one piece of bread. It would never end there for me. Now that I look back, I understand why that happened. It's because I created really, really bad habits when I gained the weight that I did. I don't know if you guys have seen this video. I explained how I actually gained over 50 pounds and how I was able to lose it slowly. But basically what happened is that I needed to really quit those habits. And in order to do that, I had to really cut some of the things out of my diet completely so I can actually establish and create new habits so I can fall back on those now instead of going back to my old habits. So this is so important. I wanted to take the time and mention it on this video. So when you're watching videos on YouTube or my videos, you gotta see if you can actually relate to me. Do you have the similar habits as mine? Um, then you can take my advice. If not, and if you're a type of person who is mentally healthy and you can have a balanced lifestyle and you have no problem having a slice of bread and just going home and go to sleep, then that's perfectly fine. But if you're a type of person like me who is crazy about food and would have one thing and it would lead to another thousand things, you need to really be honest with yourself and see if you can take my advice and really establish a new lifestyle and new habits before living a healthy lifestyle. I'm so, so thankful that I make those strict decisions during that part of my life because I had to create new habits, create a new healthy lifestyle. So when I go out right now, when I go have a piece of bread, when I have ice cream or when I cheat or do anything <laughs> that I want, I can go back to my healthier routine. You gotta have a core. I mentioned this in most of my videos, build a strong core so you can fall back into it, especially if you're living a really unhealthy lifestyle like I was. So another time that I really craved bread and sugar is when I was hungry. So during my weight loss journey, I made sure I had six meals religiously, no matter where I went, if I was out, if I was out with my friends, if I went to a restaurant, like I would make sure I'm eating all the time. Let's say if I'm invited for dinner, I would eat right before I would leave my house. So I had my meal and then three hours after I would have another meal at the restaurant. That's how obsessed I was with that. I never wanted to feel hungry because when I felt hungry, I felt like I wanted a lot of carbs. And it's normal because carb and sugar and bread are the quickest source of energy. And that's what your body craves when you're hungry. And the trick to weight loss, let me tell you, is like literally this. If you're gonna take anything from this video, is the fact that you should always, 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 always make sure that you're full. So if sometimes you feel like you're really, really craving something and you really wanna have something sweet, make sure you make your own dessert at home if you can. I have a quick recipe book. It includes a bunch of recipes that I've made and used. It's my own recipes I used during my weight loss journey. You can download it for free. All you have to do is to type in your email and I will email it to you. Now this part is all for women. So if you're a guy, you can skip through. If this is your menstrual cycle and you feel like you're craving carbs and sugar, it's normal. The reason that happens is because your estrogen, your progesterone, and your cortisol levels actually rise. So your serotonin levels are gonna fall short and you're gonna crave a lot of carbs and sugar and it's totally normal. Don't feel guilty about wanting carbs and sugar. This is what you're gonna do. So the number one tip I give all of my female clients is to always track your cycles. I have an app called PC on my phone. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I can track it, I can track my symptoms, and it's really, really useful. So you know exactly when your period is coming, make sure you do your shopping before your period hits and when you're actually full, so after you eat. Number two is to do a lot of yoga, stretch, meditating, nice baths, anything you can do to take care of yourself, lower your cortisol levels a little bit, calm down, feel happy, so you feel really good, so you don't need to get your serotonin from other stuff, you don't need to get dopamine from food. The third tip I wanted to give you is to increase your calories by two to 300 a few days before your period hits. And that helps you really lower and tame those cravings. Perhaps you can add an extra meal or you can add one of the sugar replacement recipes from my recipe book down below that you could download and you can make that at home. It includes a few different types of cakes, pancakes, hot chocolate, and things like that that you could make at home with natural sugar. All you have to do is to add a few ingredients to your shopping list like banana, cocoa powder, 
butter, baking powder, oats and milk and eggs. And that's all you need to have. If your goal is to quit bread, I really, really hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments which tip you found most useful. And let me know if you have any comments or any ideas for my next videos. I would really, really appreciate it. I really appreciate you guys liking, watching, subscribing to my channel every day. It makes me so, so happy and motivated to make more videos for you guys. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for being a part of my YouTube journey. See you in the next video. Bye.